Good Wednesday morning. We are still uh, in our Lenten devotions, and I hope you're enjoying them as we go through here. Uh, yesterday, you ended with Psalm 22, and Psalm 22 is a messianic psalm. It's the, uh, the prophecy of the Messiah. It's actually the life of Christ. If you break it down, uh, you can see that David's clearly not talking about himself, but it's, it's a prophecy of what's going to come, beginning with, uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So if you take that, that knowledge of, of Psalm 22 and the fact that uh, it was a known psalm and each of the, the Pharisees would have sung that psalm in, in the temple or the synagogue and then to hear Christ say that from the cross, what a powerful testimony, uh, what a powerful uh, final recognition and final uh, acknowledgement that he had to be the Messiah. Today your reading plan takes you from Psalm 23 to, let me double check, from 23 to 26. But I'm going to do you a favor and I'm going to read Psalm 23 for you uh, today because I want to look at it uh, a little differently. Obviously, we've all grew up memorizing Psalm 23. You've probably heard it at just about every funeral you've ever been to. Uh, but it's more than that. And I want to show you why it's more than that. Uh, I preached a sermon on this, so I won't go into too great a detail for those of you uh, who've already heard it. But I really want you to look at this line by line. And I'm going to, to try to take some dramatic pauses as I read this in order for you to, to really think about these lines. And then when I'm finished, uh, we'll, we'll kind of go through and, and hit some of these topics uh, as we go through. But I really want you all to, to meditate on Psalm 23 today. Read the other three Psalms as well, but, but really think about the 23rd Psalm in a way that you probably haven't thought about it before because it's become so ritualistic. Let's look at Psalm 23 together. Verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a promise. The whole thing. It's just an amazing uh, poem, song written by David. And let's really look at it. So David obviously was a shepherd. David makes this correlation between being a shepherd and now being a sheep underneath a, a, a greater shepherd. And that's what this whole thing is, is about. It's being a sheep under a greater shepherd. And David says, you, you, I lack nothing. You make sure that I, I'm in the best of pastures and that water's provided for me. And some of you are going to say, well, I haven't had the best of pastures, but you've been fed. And that's the key. Not only are we talking, we're not necessarily talking totally about the physical. We're talking about a, a spiritual manifestation where your needs have been met spiritually, causing yourself to find your way, uh, even if your physical need hasn't been met. And he guides me along the right path, so the path of righteousness. We've talked about this before, about how we, we trade our, our sin for his righteousness. And that's the act of our first act of justification is we, we're trading our sin for his righteousness. And daily, we're walking closer to him in that righteousness. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, or the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. That doesn't say that you're going to keep me out of the valley. It says you're going to go with me through the valley. And a lot of times when we're in the valley, uh, we forget that we're not alone. And we want to dwell on, uh, on those negatives. And we, we forget to, to cry out to the Lord. And that's, that's when you need him the most. The, the whole footprints in the sand uh, poem that uh, for many of us thought probably was in the Bible for a long time. But the footprints in the sand poem that said, you know, that's when I carried you when it was roughest. That's that, that valley. The rod and the staff. I, I think I, I like this the most. Because not only are the rod and the staff there to provide protection against outside enemies or a wolf or, or whatever is coming after you, but that rod and that staff there is also to knock you back in, keep you in line. Conviction, that's that power of the Holy Spirit we don't like to talk about. You know, it's not all the comforter. It's sometimes it's the, the corrector. 
and the, the redirector, if you will. You anoint my head with oil. But let's go back one more. You prepare, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This is your witness. This is how you react to what's going on around you. People aren't going to like you. That's, that's normal. But in spite of that, God's gonna, is saying, you're going to flourish here. And your enemies are going to see that bounty of your flourishment, even with their oppression. Uh, that's the key. It's how you're responding in the presence of your enemies. Are you responding in love? Are you 70 times 7 in your forgiveness? Or are you replying through the flesh in anger? You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You anoint my head with oil. That's that protection. Oh, you anoint a sheep's head with oil to keep the, keep the flies and the, and the bugs off their head and out of their ears and eyes. It's an important element to, to shepherding, and it's an important element to, to being the sheep. We're looking for that protection. We're looking for that, uh, that grace, that acknowledgement, that mercy. My cup overflows. Many of us dwell in the negative. Uh, especially in the times that we're living. Many of us like to watch the news and we soak in all that negativity. And instead of, uh, instead of really sitting back and saying, you know, I am greatly blessed and highly favored. I have ever, this going for me. I have that going for me. Sometimes it's, it's easy to see what's going wrong and, and harder to see what's going right. You should really, uh, as Bing Crosby says in, in White Christmas, really bring in the idea of uh, going to sleep counting your blessings don't count sheep count your blessings see how the lord has provided for you and what the lord has provided for you uh, and take every every chance you can to be grateful surely your goodness and love or mercy will follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever regardless of what that looks like could be martyrdom but at the end of the line, goodness and mercy and my reward is eternally, eternity with him in heaven. What a promise. So when you're not in the right state, when something's going on in your life and you're battling, battling demons or anxiety or depression, uh, along with seeking help, I firmly believe you should seek all the help you possibly can. Read Psalm 23. Be encouraged by the words of David. Uh, at, if you haven't noticed already, as we've gone through Psalm, the, the book of Psalms, uh, we're not even halfway through, but as we've gone through a portion of the book, you can see David wasn't always in the best of places, and he wasn't always in the best frame of mind. Uh, and some of the Psalms are more lamentations than they are, you know, praises. So it's good to, to see that even through there, you can respond in, in, in gratitude and in love and in praise. So that's my tasking for you this week. Uh, really meditate on Psalm 23 today. Read 23 through 26, but really meditate on Psalm 23 today. Uh, if you need to, to print it off and, and put it somewhere in the house where you see it, uh, make it, reclaim it. Take it back from the funeral home. Make it a, a daily thought, a daily uh, prayer, a daily song in your heart that regardless of what assails you, you know that the comforter is there you're gonna be. You're gonna be all right. You're not alone in the valley. Think about that today. Let's go to the Lord, gracious heavenly Father. We thank you for this opportunity we've had to come together. And Lord, we just ask that you do allow us to meditate on this psalm. Allow us to think through it, not just react of, of, of our feeling, but really think through it. Apply it to both our heart and our minds as we, as we go through and we understand what you're saying through your servant David. Lord, we ask that you be with each and every person watching this video and, and the prayers and petitions of their hearts. May they be heard by you and may you act in mercy and in love. And now, Lord, we ask that you lead, guide, and direct us and bring us all back together safely at our appointed hour. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, Bible study was last night. Uh, if you missed out, you can pick us back up next week. Uh, and next week, Awana starts, and we're all really excited about that. We've already got a... Uh, a little group forming of people who've registered uh, early. If you want to register, go to the church's website. I'll put that link uh, in the comment section of the uh, of the video. But uh, but be excited. Uh, 
if you're not of the age or you don't have children or grandchildren of, of, from two to, to seniors in high school, uh, be praying for it. Uh, whether you're in the area or not, be praying for, for God to move in a mighty way that we can really reach some kids uh, and young adults with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all hopefully on Sunday morning. We'll be in the seventh chapter of the book of Mark. And remember, today your reading is Psalm 23 through 26. And if you want to get ahead on the sermon, it is Mark chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. Have a blessed and fantastic rest of your week. And remember, above all, you are greatly blessed and highly favored.